So it looks as if the London Mayor Sadiq Khan is still committed to, to the US expansion, but he's happy to look at ways to mitigate the financial impact, apparently. Now we'll read into us a bit more from Sky News, guys. Let's go. <laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, guys, wherever you are in the world. This is Regan Lee here with an article from Sky News. Um, and the headline is Sadiq Khan is committed to the US expansion but happy to look at ways to mitigate the financial impact. Sky News understands the London Mayor is willing to consider measures as long as they do not reduce the policy's effectiveness at improving air quality. Uh, just right off the bat, if you hear some noise in the background, there's nothing really I can do about it. Just sort of point that out. Um, I mean, I'm, first and foremost, before we obviously read into it, I'm happy that. Uh, it looks as if Sadiq Khan is going to commit to the ULS expansion, which I think is good. It is good in terms of improving the air quality because, you know, how many times have we talked about the environment and climate and everyone needs to do their part? And I'm, like, and I'm happy that he's basically said, look, I need to commit to this, but if we have an alternative or a better solution, then, then, then give me something. Because here's the thing, like, you know, people in Uxbridge, yes, uh, people did vote based on this, but also you have to remember, Uxbridge is a very strong conservative hold as well. Um, just because of what happened in other by-elections with massive overturns does not necessarily mean that it's going to happen everywhere. People are still going to vote conservative, regardless of how bad things are going to get. Um, so, but. Anyways, let's read into it. So, Sadiq Khan is still committed to expanding the ultra-low emission zone, the ULES, but he's happy to look at ideas for ways to mitigate the financial impact on London Sky News understands. The London Mayor is understood to be willing to consider measures as long as they do not reduce the policy's effectiveness at improving air quality. Mr Khan's plans to expand the ULES to encompass from the outer boroughs of London from August the 29th has been blamed for London's failure to take Boris Johnson's old seat. Now, just so I want to stop there. So, I mean, all we've ever heard from Labour's side is people saying, if it wasn't for this policy, if it wasn't for this policy, we would have taken the seat. It's just like, you don't know that for certain. You don't know that for certain. Are you, what, are you a mind reader? You don't know that for certain. People forget, as I just said at the intro, this was a very strong Conservative held seat as well. It's been a long time since it's switched as well and it's important to remember that you know it's very important to remember that like i've listened and i've seen videos of people being asked about politics and all that kind of stuff and and i've seen a lot of people in uxbridge saying they miss boris johnson oh he was a nice man all this kind of stuff and we know what kind of person boris johnson is like the vast majority of you know and he's not a very nice man in fact he's a very nasty piece of work but people in uxbridge didn't want him to go they didn't want to lose him they weren't happy, but they don't like Labour. Um, and yes, some people in Uxbridge were tired of like of tired of Conservative and wanted to stick it into them as well. Yes, this policy did have an impact, but is it the actual the overall one hundred percent reason? No. And there should be room for optimism from the Labour side of things because they got close to taking a very strong Labour a very strong Conservative seat. And they won another, they won Selby, didn't they? Like, like, you know, it was a very good by-election for them, which I've discussed in, in full already in a live stream. So to say it's based just on this, I don't think so. It definitely played its part, that's for sure. And I'm glad that Mr. Khan is, is, is expanding it. But if someone says that he shouldn't, give me an alternative. Give me an alternative, tell me a better solution, then okay, then it's something that they should listen to. But if you're not going to give an alternative, tell me. Now, I'm not an, I'm not an expert, but I don't have an alternative to what the London Mayor is doing. But if you've got an alternative, put it in the comments down below, guys. Just saying. The charge means drivers across the capital will face a £12.50 daily charge unless their car meets the stringent emissions rules. A source close to London Mayor says Sadiq has been clear he is listening to Londoners following this by-election. He will be listening. You know, there's a reason why he's been mayor for quite a, quite a long time now, guys. He does listen to people. 
Like he's he's not afraid to take calls because you've seen him go onto LBC take and take on callers and who really do give him a, a, a right hard time and he takes on these questions. He's not afraid to talk to the public. He's not hiding like Rishi Sunak is. It's important to remember that. So obviously you can see this is the you can see on the map here. Obviously this is the current ULES port there with it in the in the in a circle in a blue circle there. And then the light blue circle on the outside of London. That's where the charge is going to expand to, obviously. So nearly covering nearly the whole of the M25, pretty much. <clears throat> nearly. There's still quite a bit outside of it, but that is the, the plan, obviously, from the 29th of August. Critics argue the scheme disproportionately affects poorer people who need to drive for work and discourages sole trainers from outside London who is taking work from inside the city. My first answer would be public transport, but then your counter argument would be, well, public transport is too expensive. Public transport is expensive, yes, but is there not a way you can go around? Is there not? Is it not cheaper? I would say do the maths. If you can carry, if you can, if you can travel to work without the need of driving in your car, then do it because you're you're making a difference just there. Um, but do you have to drive? Okay, if you're a lorry driver, okay, that's a different story. There might be some jobs, obviously, that you require vehicles. But I would say, yeah, but given the, the public transport and the infrastructure, the transport structure we have in London, you should try to, you should be using public transport more, really. Cycling, tube, bus, all that kind of stuff. You really should try to. Mr Khan's team defended the ULS plan, saying only one out of ten cars driving in outer London would face a charge with a £110 million scrappage scheme to help lower earners upgrade their vehicles. Party leaders urged to keep green promises. Both Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer have been urged not to drop their party's green policies after the Tories narrowly held on to the Archbishop and right slip by 495 votes. After Archbridge became the party's sole victory set of three by elections on Thursday, the Prime Minister has come under renewed pressure to de deluge pledges designed to help the UK meet its pledge of having net zero carbon uh, economy by 2050. Meanwhile, Labour leaders Keir vowed to stick with the Green Pledge, but he said his party will need to reflect and learn the lessons over how they implement. Both parties have kind of backtracked on 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 Greens. Sunak is being pushed by by Conservative donors, and um, sorry, I tried not to sneeze. And Keir Starmer has rolled back as well because he's he's looking at trying to show that he's careful about the numbers and the costs and that kind of thing so which is good and bad because you know how many times have i talked about global warming guys you know gove has called for relaxation on zero net measures well i, I can tell him where to stick it because we can't afford to as a planet it comes as the House and Secretary Michael Gove warned against the, the treating the cause of the environment as a religious crusade and called for relax. Religious crusade? Has he not been paying attention? This is a complete, utter, religious. There's nothing religious about what's happening right now in the world. Mr Gove, who was Environment Secretary when the 2015 Net Zero Pledge was made under Theresa May's Premiership, called for a thought for environmentalism. He also said he didn't know whether the ban on, on the petrol and diesel cars of 2020 was perfectly calibrated, but he said it was achievable. <sighs> well, forget what he says. It's more important is what uh, is Sadiq Khan has made it clear that he's committed to. It looks as if it's not absolutely confirmed, but it looks as though he's committed to it, which is good. Um, we need to ensure that we all do our bits. And I'm glad that he's committed to that. And as I've said, if, if someone has a better alternative that can help reduce emissions and improve air quality in London, please throw it right at us, you know. Because that's what we people want, a better solution. Yeah, if you have a better solution, a cheaper solution, please offer it. That's that's what I'd say to those. But what do you guys think? Are you happy that Sadiq Khan, the London Mayor, is committed to keeping this? Um... Should he look at other alternatives, continue to look at alternatives? What alternatives, if any, do you think yeah, they should be done? Let me know uh, down in the comments below. Like, share and subscribe as always, guys. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you all very, very soon. Oh, yeah.